Welcome back to the final part of Elden Ring the Ultimate Guide. It is part 44. It is Ashen Lindell. So we've already sacrificed ourselves in the forge. Or uh, Melina in the forge, rather. But we're starting this episode off by going to the Forbidden Lands, uh, Grace, because we need to. There's an item that you can only get from the Forbidden Lands in Ashen Lindell. And it is uh, certainly a good item that we want to get. So. We've just sped this whole process up because we've already been here. But this is how we get the Air Trees Favor plus three, which is obviously an item that we'd want. And we're also going to be utilizing Assassin's Gambit like we have in previous parts. Uh, very, very well. God, dear God, Assassin's Gambit is putting in the work at this point. But as you can see, we're in, we're in Ashen Lindell. This is uh, the bit with all the misbegottens, but now it's a big sandy area that, yeah. But there's a bunch of uh, ulcerated tree spirits in this area. Obviously, we don't want to fight them, so we're not going to fight them. What we're going to do is we're going to use uh, Assassin's Gambit, and we can just run along the edge, and they can't see us, and nice and easy. Yeah, because honestly, you get nothing for killing these things aside from runes, so just come here and grab the Eartree's Favor plus two, immediately warp out after you've picked it up. Yes. There you go, and see you later. Now, if you've got any tips of your own, stick them in the pin tips comment, and also just comment fucking anything. I need the engagement. Comment anything. I don't care if you've... Anything. Just gibberish. Tons of it. Be inflammatory to people in the comment section. But we are... Uh... Yeah, you've got my permission for this one time to be inflammatory. No racism, though. But okay, so we're heading down to this little bit here, and now we're getting an item that we weren't able to get in the subterranean shunning grounds. Uh, so this bit of Ashenlandell kind of connects to the, the sewers, and we can drop down this hole here, and this gets us the, uh, oh, Crimson Amber Medallion plus two? Yes. Oh, remembered. And that's, uh, obviously more HP if you so need it. So you can really stack for HP using the Erdtree's Favor and the Crimson Amber plus two, yada yada. And, uh, now we're heading back to the Grace and just once again heading south like we did just there. It's quite easy to navigate your way through Ashen Lindell. There's not a lot here. And um, yeah, we can pick up a rune arc and then from here we can head west and Corrin should be floating about, round about here. But before that, I guess we're picking up this item, which is, uh, oh God, I've no idea. Oof, golden sunflower, great. Yeah, it's gonna come in super handy for the next 20 <laughs> minutes of gameplay. <laughs> I love that the game's still loading you down with crafting materials at the very end of the game. I know. Love that. Here's Corrin, uh, sitting out in the air. Yeah, so speak to him, exhaust his dialogue, and um, effectively this is how you complete his quest, and thus uh, Golden Ask's quest also. So he's yeah. went a bit mental, exhaust his dialogue, and I think we quit out and then load back in. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. It's um, also great that will... we, uh, we get to use the... Um... Oh, so for that we get Corrin's bell bearing, the flail, and Corrin's robe. But we also get to use the uh, Air Trees Favor Plus 2 for all of five minutes. Love that. Yeah, although you do get to use it for the whole DLC. Oh, um, that's true. You could also have came here, you could have gotten the Air Trees Favor Plus 2 immediately after um, act like igniting the Air Tree. So I guess you could have done that earlier and then got it for Farmazula, Moog's Palace, and Halid Tree. We Not should that probably we have done it. that. We know that we needed it, but I guess now you know for your next playthrough. But again, we do want to keep these uh, the items, we, do, we want to keep the areas a little bit more insular, so just, you know, th there is sort of things that you would recommend to do out of order, but in terms of, like, actually showing it in the guide, you have to kind of keep it in order, because otherwise people will go, oh, you didn't get the Erdtree's favour, and it's like, well, actually we did. So, we get the Mending Rune of Perfect Order from... Um, from gold mask here and then we quit out load back in and then we get the gold mask set now that mending rune of perfect order will allow, will thus allow you to get the gold mask ending um, best ending but to make a point the gold mask ending is actually uh there's several endings in the game uh that all give you the same trophy so it's just a different flavor of essentially the same ending um that includes just the the normal ending gold masks ending and the uh, Dung Eater's ending as well. They all give you the same trophy. Fear's ending as well. The, ah, uh, yes. yes. Age of Duskborn. 
So that's four endings of which are all essentially the same. Now you're going to jump on that railing and then use it as leverage to jump up over here. Uh, it's just a lot faster than going the long way around to get here. Uh, again, utilise an Assassin's Gambit because we don't want to fight that Gargoyle. Why would we? Because we're just picking up some items. And thus, because he can't see us, we can just warp straight back to the main Ashen Lindell bonfire. And um, I think that's it for the item runs. I think that is everything here. So, yep, looks like we're preparing to fight the first boss here. Given yes. that um, we have put wild strikes on, you can probably guess what kind of boss it is. It's an NPC. It's our old friend, Sir Gideon, off near the old. And he's uh, he's had it coming for a while at this point. He is a bastard. Um, oh, thankfully, what? because of the way that this fight works, you can just annihilate him before he's finished spieling at you. Yeah, um, again, you know, uh, as we've said before, in terms of NPC fights, this is the method that we're using. It is Wild Strikes. You can put Blood Flame Blade on your Great Stars to get even more bleed and fire damage out of it and just go to town on him. Honestly, it's quite, it's quite funny, actually. Um, he's not really particularly difficult uh, to begin with. But yeah, just start, just start swinging. That's him, he's dead. As soon as he's caught in this, he is dead. There we go. Night, night. Yep. Gideon off near the all-knowing. Couldn't see that shit coming, go figure. <laughs> yeah. uh, I will expound a little on what Gideon can do to you. Gideon gets spells depending on which of the demigods um, and indeed remembrance bosses you have killed. So his fight will actually change depending on if you've killed Rikard or Melania or Moog or he'll get moves depending on which one. Uh, try not to fall off that branch because so, it makes you look like a clown um so, te Gideon... so technically in this in our version of the guide gideon will have his full repertoire of moves not that it matters because he can't actually use any of them because, because no, of wild strikes no. but if gideon can hit you there's a few attacks he has that do hit exceptionally hard he can throw triple rings of light at you he has um law of causality so if you attack him enough he'll explode um, he can hit you pretty hard, but Wild Strikes plus Great Stars plus Blood Flame Blade is just L plus ratio for Gideon. <laughs> Those two so, things are equal. So now we've got another boss coming up. We are putting a Lion's Claw on for this one. Good old Lion's Claw. Nothing beats Lion's Claw. You know, reference to the <laughs> Simpsons meme. Except in this case, actually, nothing beats Lion's Claw. So it turns out it's as good as Rock and Rock, Paper, Scissors. Which is pretty good because nothing beats it. So yeah, we're heading up to the boss. Win rate. Yeah. <laughs> they really need to nerf. They need to nerf that. <laughs> the summon sign you saw there was for Nefeli Lou. Um, we have that because we finished her quest. If you had done the Frenzied Flame ending and uh, Shabriri had disappeared at the right time, you would have Shabriri's summon sign there as well. Yes. You could so summon if you, both if you, at once. Um, if you Frenzied Flamed when we done it um, at the end of Mountaintops of the Giants. Uh, indeed, you would have had uh, Nefeli and Shapiri, like you said. So now we are fighting Godfrey. Now, some people say that Godfrey is hard. I don't think he's hard. He can hit like an absolute fucking bastard, don't get me wrong. Uh, but obviously, the mimic tier is just taking some of the heat off us and thus allowing us to get our equipment ready. But we're just going to use uh, the, the good old classic Blood Flame Blade, L1s, and Lion's Claw. And it's just like everything else. This is just good enough. It's just good enough. Watch out for his big AoEs. Um, some of them do take a while to wind up. Um, after he does that first roar and slam, all of his stomps will hit the entire arena. We're transitioning him in, into phase two now, where he becomes a pure... Wow. Oh, the hitbox from his stomp was still active. Yeah. <laughs> through the cutscene, so that's what we got hit by there. That doesn't happen every time. Just try and stay out of the blast radius of his um, attacks. And don't let what's happening to the Mimic right now happen to you. Yeah, don't get the main grabbed. Thing, the main thing you have to watch out for, ultimately, is the grab attacks. So just kind of... You know, you can just wait for his um, aggro to be on the Mimic before you actually attack him. The uh, stomps, you actually have to jump over, but I personally feel that they're quite hard to time. Um... So you can just, you can't, they don't really do too much damage. 
nah. but it's Overall, honestly I really I just don't feel like Godfrey is or indeed Horaloo is really that difficult to me it feels a lot like Malekith where you just kind of hit him and he just kind of bleeds to death and dies so you know what, what else you, what else can you really say about it but there's a lot we can say about the next boss which is why we have this specific setup we have again infused our great stars with fire we've got the um the Halid Drake Talisman on, so that's Holy Defense. We've got the great the the Tower Great Shield Talisman on. We're using Tish, and we are also using uh, Holy Proof Dried Liver, which puts in so much work, so much work. And, yeah, so uh, I sincerely hope you didn't use any of them, like we told you not to. Exactly, because we only got four of them, and we're using Lion's Claw, and we are also using um, Flaming Strike. Uh, we can also, we've got a different version that uses um, Black Flame Tornado, which we will also show you the footage for that. But if you've had any trouble with uh, Radigan and the Elden Beast, you are now no longer going to, because this this setup is fucking fantastic against this. Now, I felt that Radigan and Elden Beast were actually very difficult, because you have to fight two very tanky enemies, like, one after another. But when you've got it set up like this, you really, you just end up taking a reasonable amount of damage. So first of all, you're going to uh, drink your Physic, you're going to take your Holy Proof Dried Liver, you're going to get off a Golden Vow, which you can just about do, and then it is uh, just on to fighting the boss. Now, in our Physic Flask, um, it should be uh, Damage Negation and Holy Negation? I can't remember what ones we have in our Physic Flask, actually. Damage Negation and possibly Fire Damage. Uh, regardless, though, it is literally just fire off your um, fire off Lion's Claw. Or jumping out ones are actually slightly better than Lion's Claw for Radigan. He's kind of skinny, so you can kind of miss him sometimes. But jumping out ones very, very good. And when he's on the ground, you can just hit him and get in some free damage. And then that means again he's not attacking you. But just look at the amount of damage he's actually doing to us because he does quite a lot of holy damage with his attacks. The amount of holy damage negation that we are putting on is kind of crazy. So when he gets to about half health, that's when we're going to summon Tish. Tish is really, really squishy. If you summon Tish immediately, you run the high chance that Radigan is actually just going to kill Tish straight up. Uh, but if you wait until he's about half health, um, you should be able to get your money's worth out of Tish, as you saw there. He got hit with death and death in the air, and he's fucking dead. But now... We will then have Tish for going into the Elden Beast, and the Elden Beast has a gigantic amount of HP. Uh, and that's why Tish is specifically so good against the Elden Beast compared to the Mimic tier. Now, switching back to the, um, the Halberd with Black Flame Tornado, this just allows us to drain. It's, it's actually very similar to how we beat um, Placidious Axe. Uh, we're just going to... Drain his fucking health as much as we can. Now, we really ran the risk of getting extremely murdered there off uh, Elden Beast's, like, homing, uh, what's it called? Great Stars? Not Great Stars. Elden Stars attack. Now, with its uh, rings attack, you have to jump over that. You actually can't, you seemingly can't dodge through it. You have to jump over it to dodge it, but... Yeah, when he does this attack, just start running away. Don't tank it like we did. That's a dumb idea. But as you can see, with the amount of holy damage negation that we have, it was actually okay to tank in the sense that it didn't kill us. But we did get very lucky there. Yeah, I'll just describe what's actually happening there. Um, the armor we're wearing has decent holy resist. The Halig Drake Talisman gives you about, I want to say, 20%-ish. And the... Um, Holy Proof Livers are actually stronger than the others and give you, I think, 30% extra Holy Resist. Now, these do have diminishing returns. You can't stack to 100% resistance. But uh, with the setup that we have, our Holy Damage Negation is about 70. Meaning that 70% of any Holy Damage attack that hits us is doing nothing. <laughs> it's having zero effect. Uh, so we can afford to get hit by quite a lot of this thing's attacks and still get away with it. Yeah, and most bosses in the game you can't really seem to stack this heavy defense-wise. Uh, but for these specific two, I mean, look, like, I mean, if you're not stacking holy defense, you know that this attack absolutely 
pummels you, and yet we were just able to just fucking take it. Uh, and as a result, it gives you so much flexibility and able to get damage through into the boss. Um, just uh, You can just re-up on the Holy Proof Livers periodically, probably take one just before you defeat Radigan or just after. But otherwise, uh, I think he must have gotten hit with a Destined Death and a Black Flame Tornado there. And he's very well nearly dead. If Tish can just get a couple more hits in, that'll be him dead. Or indeed, we get more hits in. Just depends. Tish is also quite good against this boss because he moves about a lot. So the boss... Like, he's kind of squishy, but the boss, he can actually like avoid an amount of attacks. So that's quite good. Yeah, um, Tish is better at closing the gap than the Mimic as well, which is nice. Yes, that is also true. So that is a kind of um, combination build focused around Tish and Destined Death. Uh, as you saw, Tish drained a lot of that thing's HP over the course of that fight. And um, you can just kind of get free hits in with Black Flame Tornado. But now we're going with a more Mimic tier orient version. Uh, as you can see, we are not using the Air Tree's favor, but we put on Shard of Alexander. We've still got the Defense Talismans on. We've got Holy Proof Drive Lever on. We've got the Mimic tier. We've got the um, the Bubble Shield perfume that Mimic tier can do. And we've got the Dual Great Stars again. Um, lean into Fire. We've got Lion's Claw and Flame and Strike. And this is how we're going to tackle. So again, you know, if you just want to go with like what the build does, this is just an, another version to be able to beat the boss. And they're about as good as each other. Like it's really... It's dealer's choice when it comes down to it. But uh, Radigan will certainly be a lot easier if you have the Mimic tier out. That is one thing I will say. So if you're struggling against Radigan, this version is probably better. If you're struggling against Elden Beast, the other version is probably a little bit better. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was just about to say. Um, the Mimic tier is substantially more tanky than uh, Tish. Yeah. And so he can put up more of a fight against Radigan on his own. Uh, Which so like I said, you know, if you, if you summon Tish at the start of Radigan's fight, you've, you run the risk of Tish dying quite quite readily to Radigan. But uh, yeah, you, you and the Mimic can just pummel the absolute fuck out of him. Again, you see was... Lion's Claw sort of whiff because Radigan yeah. is skinny, as you said. So um, generally, it's a pretty, a pretty good catch-all tool. Lion's Claw, but there are some situations where you might be better off with just a jumping L1. This oh, being that was good. That was that was good. The jumping L1 into Lion's Claw for the damage. Oh, very nice. Ooh. <laughs> and now, in all my previous attempts at this boss, this attack was absolutely devastating. And in this case, I was able to just take hits with it just because of the amount of holy defense was stacked. And I've know. got to take a fucking liver. <laughs> Yep. So taking that take... right before this next phase starts. Yeah, yeah. And uh yeah, now you can just fucking fire into this thing. Uh just same general strategy. Um you want to avoid this attack. And then kinda of get behind it and then just just get it staggered. I think I think four lines claws should stagger it. So you kinda of want to try and get them in as quickly as possible. I missed the opportunity. It is what it is. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Um, stance breaking the Elden Beast is obviously fantastic, but it's not required. You don't need to do it. It would appear um, in the Physic Flask it is the all damage negation plus um, health regen. Now that I'm looking at it. Sure, yeah. You can see uh, the now, icons under the stamina bar there. You could also, again, use a rune arc for this boss. You'd be having an even easier time. Oh, certainly, especially with something like Morgoth's rune. Um, that just gives you 30% more HP. Yeah. Um, stacking that with something like Crimson Seed so that your flasks are healing a proportionally better amount. Like, yeah, that'd be kind of crazy as well. You could you'd be getting like a, a lot of health back. So, yeah. just, again, just jumping this. I, I don't know what that explosion was, but I guess just beware that it doesn't always fire out three rings sometimes just be one that it blows up i guess but it doesn't really matter because you've got so much defense who gives a fuck <laughs> mm -hmm. you, can, you can just get off scot-free from most of this because most of this thing's damage is holy damage so if you can keep those holy proof livers like you absolutely should have um you've got the halo drake plus two that you picked up in mogwin palace um stacking these things together you just this thing's just not a threat 
it really isn't. Like, its physical attacks are the easiest to dodge, and they're the ones that present the most risk at this point, so... God, I just cannot get those four lines claws off to get the stagger. That's really annoying. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Took the time, but we got there. And then just hammer it into it with as much damage as you can get off, because you'll probably do more damage if you just repeatedly hit it instead of... Uh, Taking the repost. This is the um, Elden Stars that you're seeing here. Um, this is an attack that chases you constantly. Uh, as soon as it deploys it, it puts its hand on the blade um, and releases this thing. And it will just keep hounding you until it eventually explodes. Now, that would normally be a problem. But, again, holy damage negation. We just don't care. Just ignore it. Ah, you just, you it's really not going to do enough damage to hurt you. You could also, in theory, um, stack the Peril Drake Talisman, which will give you further Holy Defense, because it gives, uh, it increases all your defenses by a little bit, as opposed to one of them by a lot. So you could get even more, but clearly it's, it's just not necessary. Um, the only thing that I would suggest is try and get those four Lion's Claws off as quickly as possible in the fight. Um, just maybe, again, because I was very, very close to getting the four off right at the start. But otherwise, that's pretty painless. If, you, if you're not taking much damage from this thing, you just don't need to give a fuck. And then you also need to remember you're also getting health back from the great stars themselves. And that is mm. pretty much it. So now you're going to quit out the game and you're going to back up your save file because we're going to show you how to get all three endings in one playthrough. So back your save file up, right? And now you'll, you'll be uh, teleported here after you defeat the boss. So now you've got the blue, uh, the blue summon sign for Rani's ending. Uh, and you can touch the fractured Marika right there, and that will give you uh, the, um, like, uh, what do you call them? Like, Korn's ending. One of ending. the four Mending Rune endings. So yes. you can either use the default ending, the Mending Rune of the Death Prince, which is Fear's ending, the Mending Rune of Perfect Order, which is Gold Mask's ending, and the Doodoo -doo Devourer's ending as well, that I can't actually remember the name for the Mending Rune of. But those four endings all net you the same trophy, so honestly, dealer's choice, pick whichever one you want. Gold Mask. But, what if you already have the trophy for one of those endings? Well, actually, you can get the Frenzied Flame ending even this far into the game. Uh, which also means that you can actually sacrifice um, Melina and then get the Frenzied Flame ending kind of just spitting in her fucking face, I suppose. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> So, yeah, the, 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 the you win entirely option, but yeah, uh, strictly speaking, if you do that, if you do sacrifice Melina, then get the Frenzy Flame ending, you will in fact get a slightly different version of the ending where Melina isn't alive and isn't uh, trying to kill you afterwards. So you get like a worse quote-unquote version of the ending, but it is interesting the game does accommodate for it. Now again, obviously once you've done that, you can speak to Hieta here and you'll get the, uh, the Frenzy Flame seal and a friend's flame stone i guess who cares but uh yeah now you can in fact go back to the fractured marica and uh which is you know you can just walk back to the site of grace and then you can become the lord of the frenzied flame so you can do it this far into the game which is uh kind of crazy that it allows you to do that but so be it very non-committal for a souls game i will say yeah true true <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you're getting the best end in here. Um, Hit no, or at least you, I think so. You do not want to go into New Game Plus just yet. Uh, so you can go to New Game Plus from the Round Table, Grace, I'm pretty sure. But you can choose to not do that. And this is the build for the end of the game. But remember, you only get one shot at the Mad Descending per playthrough. If you cure it, you can't get it again. Uh... So just be just be aware of what trophy you have or whatever. But okay, so now what if you have the madness ending and you already have the trophy for that? Well, we've got the solution for you. So now you can actually get rid of your madness so long as you completed Millicent's quest, got Michaela's needle and um, went to this fucking thing with the unalloyed gold needle that you get from Millicent. You touch the big flower and um, you'll exchange the, un the unalloyed gold needle that you got from Millicent, the flower will turn it into Mikola's needle, and then you come to Crumbling Farm Azula, 
you come to Placidus Axe's boss room, and here, the Grace gives you the option to... Uh, oh no, you don't do it the Grace. It's just you can now use the item in your inventory. So you can use Mikola's Needle, and that will um, get rid of the Frenzy Flame. You're still burned, so you still look uh, cool as fuck, but the eyes get removed, and thus you can then pick a different ending. Again, non-committal. Very interesting that you can do that this late in the game. Literally yeah, everything in the game is dead. Every boss, every enemy, we've killed them all. And you can still revert the ending, if you so choose. But remember, um, if you cure the Frenzy, you cannot get it back again. But there you go, you can pick Mend the Elden Ring, use the Death in a Perfect Order, use the Rune of the Death Prince... Uh, sorry, Mending Rune of Perfect Order, use the Rune of the Death Prince, or indeed, you could get Dung Eater's Ending, but ignore that entirely. Uh, just watch the Dung Eater's Ending on YouTube. That is literally my official position. So what you're now going to do, you're going to quit out the game, you're going to copy your backed up save file, and then you're going to put that into your, um, your actual, you know, you're, you're going to, Put your backed up save file and you're going to overwrite your Elden Ring data in app data roaming Elden Ring. And uh, you kind of copy that in. So now, oh fuck, now you're back to before even having an ending. Oh, what was the game going to do? How is it going to accommodate for such a thing? Well, you're going to load up Elden Ring and lo and behold, you're not at the round table hold anymore. You're uh, right before getting, uh, getting, your, uh, getting your endings. Now, this uh, Steam doesn't account for this, which means that you could... Do this twice in a row you could get the frenzy ending if you have it then you could uh, load your save in again you could then cure your frenzy and get the a, a, a rune ending and then you can do it again and then you could do and get Rani's ending you get that all in one playthrough of the game so you don't need to do it three times you can get all your trophies in one single playthrough and uh i think i think that might be it i don't know what else there is to, i think there's there is one other thing to say so yeah, we'll just do that. So this is me now explaining that you can do this shit again to just show you that I just got Rani's end in there. It took me to the round table hold. I can uh, reload my save. And um, that'll take it, that'll take us out right before getting another ending. And isn't that nice and helpful? Now you can do this method on Xbox and PS4, uh, PS5, just as long as you have uh, like Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus, etc. But as you can see, um, you can uh, go to your what do you call them? Your fucking Steam achievements. Steam achievements. Thank you. Where would I be without you? And there's one Lost. hidden achievement remaining. So that's uh, achieved all endings, and then once you achieve all endings, you will get the uh, the final achievement. Yeah, the Platinum Trophy for those of you on PlayStation. And uh, hopefully that was concise enough. I, I think I think it should be fairly self-explanatory what we've done there. Um, I know I'm a little bit bad at explaining things now and then, but ultimately I think that pretty much covers every scenario for all the endings for Elden Ring. And then again, you're taken back to the, uh, the round table hold and... That's it for the guide. That's it. That's that's everything in Elden Ring. Aside from maybe five items that I think we missed. Very minor items um, that people mentioned in the comments. And that's it for now. There's Correct. a DLC guide to come, baby. Let's go. <laughs> now, bearing in mind, it took me two years to do this fucking guide. So, um, hopefully it doesn't take... By the way, I was working on that thing basically the whole time, just so you're aware. Now, I'm a slow worker, don't get me wrong, but almost every day I was doing at least some bit of the guide, where it was planning or whatever, uh, so hopefully the DLC does not take quite as long. Now, please, um, if you enjoyed this guide, I do stream on Twitch. Uh, I've not done it for a little bit because I've been working on the guide, and thankfully I did not stream, otherwise I could not have got it up on time. But once the DLC is out, I should be streaming every Friday or Saturday. And uh, it's a really good laugh. And this here, so yeah, please follow on Twitch. Link is in the description. But this is it. This is the final build. This is the final build. 
And uh, probably the White Mask is actually the best option just for a little bit of extra damage buff. But yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks. And okay, there we go. That's Ashen Lindell done. Join us in part 45, where we're going to be doing whatever the DLC is. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.